Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience working primarily Monday to Friday in the financial services sector, five times AWS certified and like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. So we're on the lesson two now of DynamoDB in this 101 series. In the first lesson, we covered a lot of theory and then we set up some tables in the console. These tables we're gonna build upon now. We're gonna use the Bodo3 library, which is the Python library to interact with AWS services. It can be kind of complex to set up this locally on your own machine. So to bypass this step, if you don't already have it configured, I'm gonna use the Cloud9 environment, which is the inbuilt IDE in the AWS console. So we can follow along together from that point of view, or if you have your own local machine configured, feel free to fire along and just go along with that. Once we're up and running, we'll use the Bodo3 library to insert some data into the tables we set up. We'll then get that data, we'll delete some data and we'll update. I'll make all the code for free as usual on GitHub so you can follow along by copying and pasting. And then you can take that code, work on it, elaborate on it and use it for your own learning material or anything else that takes your fancy. So let's just get onto the console and crack right into it. Okay guys, welcome to the console part of lesson two. So here are the five tables we set up last time in lesson one. If you haven't set them up already, go back to lesson one and set them up. For lesson two, we're gonna interact with the Bodo3 library. There's a couple of options to do this. You can do it locally off your own desktop if you have programmatic access um, already configured uh, through the CLI tools. Alternatively, to keep things simple, I'm gonna use Cloud9, which is the AWS um, IDE. So I can spin it up here inside the console and then I don't have to worry about any of the permission issues you might encounter when you try to do it locally from your desktop. Um, it's completely free because I'm going to use a free instance. So if you also want to follow along exactly as I am, I'm going to show you the steps right now to spin up Cloud9 and start using it to interact um, with DynamoDB all inside the AWS console. Alternatively, if you already have your own IDE configured locally, then skip ahead to the marker in the video and pick up when we start downloading the code from GitHub. So to Cloud9. So just type in Cloud9 open in a new tab. And this works off your IAM permissions that you currently have configured. So I have full admin access. So when I provision this environment, I'll have full admin access in the code. So I'm just gonna call this delete um, cloud nine. So I remember to delete it once I'm done, which is next step. Um, keep it on the free tier there. So let's just keep it on the free tier. Let's go next step. And then just accept everything and create. I only have this up for uh, tonight anyway, and it's on the free tier, so it doesn't cost anyone a penny. And as I said, it's great because it means that you're not trying to configure things locally. And plus, we could all be using different machines like Windows, Mac, Linux. So this way, it's all a commonality place for us. So I'll pause the video here. This usually takes about five or ten minutes to spin up, and then we can pick it up once it's up and running. Okay, guys, that took about five minutes in total. I'm just going to leave the defaults down there um, as it sits and hit X on all of this. So if you're using your own IDE, this is the point in the video where you should pick it back up. And for everyone else, let's just keep going. So next thing we need to do is get some code. So in the link below, um, I put up a link to the GitHub um, DynamoDB 101 page, which you can see here. First thing I'm just going to do is download this as a zip. And that's it downloaded as a zip. I'm going to double click it because that'll um, unzip it for me straight away. Feel free to clone the repo or do whatever you want to do. Back on the console, if you're using the same ID as me, I'm just going to upload that code by going file, upload local files. I'm going to go select files uh, inside then my downloads, inside the main, and I want everything apart from that readme file, which would be this. Perfect, and as you can see, the files are now there. Again, if you're using your local desktop, just copy and paste them in or open them in the IDE. I'm just gonna save that by hitting Control S. So the first thing we wanna do is go to the add data file. So I've put some notes at the top, but what we're doing here essentially is we're gonna import Bodo3, which is the Python library that lets us interact with AWS services. We're going to set the client, which is the DynamoDB client, because we wanna use DynamoDB to do things. And then I have already named the tables that we need. So this is all named, I'm just naming the tables. 
And then if you want a quick look at the code, it's very repetitive, but essentially here we create an item. So that's the item. Our attributes are customer ID, first name, and last name with the customer ID being the partition key. So it must be specified. I send it using the put item uh, method of the client and we're going to put it against the customer table, which is named up here as customer. And we're going to send the item, which is declared above. So the first one's going to be John Doe. Second one's going to be Jane Doe and it goes here. And the third one's going to be Jack Sparrow himself which goes here and it's going to go here. So there's one last thing to do here. If you're on the same IDE as me or you don't have it configured, you need to type in the command sudo pip3 install boto3. And what this is going to do, it's going to install the boto3 library for us inside our cloud environment. So just do that and hit enter. Off and running. and everything's installed. So the next thing we want to do is hit run. But before we do that, I'm just going to quickly jump over onto the console and go to customer. If you remember in the first lesson, I manually entered customer and first name. But the interesting thing about DynamoDB being NoSQL is that when I specify this ID of one again, it's going to totally overwrite this item and put in the new attributes. So it's just going to do a complete replace on the primary key unlike other SQL databases. So if I go back onto my Cloud9 environment and I hit run, you can see it exited with code zero. If we jump back onto the tables and we hit the refresh icon, which is located here, you can see that it's completely overwrote that row and added Doe in. We've got Jane Doe and Jack Sparrow. Inside address, you can see that we have a couple of addresses that I've made up. Inside product, you should have a couple of products. One includes an iPad, an iPhone, an iMac, and AirPods. And then inside order, you should have nothing because we haven't created an order yet. And inside order status, you should also have nothing. So perfect. Let's have a look at the next set of commands. So let's say we wanted to now delete an item. So if we go to delete items, I've also put in the code for you. And you can see again, the top's exactly the same. Bit of a description of what's going on. We're using the Bodo3 library again, getting that client setting some variables equal to our table names. We don't use them all, but I've declared them all. And to delete, what we're going to do is delete the fourth or the product within the four as its product ID out of the table. So delete from the product table, which is product, where the product ID is four, and that's going to go into the key. So as you can see, dynamodb.deleteItem, table name equals product, key equals key, which is going to be this key. I'm getting a little response message that I'm going to print out to the console. So once back on the DynamoDB console, and you can go down to product, you can see that product ID four is the AirPods. And when I run the delete command, it will remove this item completely. So back on to the delete command, again, just hit the run up the top, and you can see that it has responded with a service 200, and it means that that entire request was successful. If we go back to DynamoDB, make sure you click that refresh, and you can see that the AirPods have disappeared. We've deleted them successfully. So that's the delete code. Feel free to play around, change a few things in it, and then you can always rerun the add code again if you delete too many items out of one of the tables, because you'll get back to where you started. Now we've got a delete running. Let's have a look at a get. So a get, the following script gets an item. Works pretty much the same as a delete. Again, it works off the key. So you need to give it that partition key, which is product ID. This time I want the product ID equal to one. It's then it would be db.client, get item, table name, which is gonna be product name, key. And I'm just gonna print that response, which is print item. I hit play run it comes back and you can see that i was able to get that item back where the description is the ipad quickly back over and you can see the product one id is the ipad again feel free play around with the code if you make any mistakes and you can't get it working download the code again run the ad data and you're back to where you started so the last thing to show in this video is a bit more complicated so it's the update item Again, this top bit's just me configuring. Boto3 in again, get the client, and then these are the table names as variables. Works pretty much the same at the start, so you need to specify what you want to update. So this time, again, I want to update product ID equal to one. Now, there's a wee bit more than an update statement in DynamoDB, as you can see. So table name, table name is product table, and that's set up there to product. Key is equal to key, okay, that's key ID one, that's fine. Expression attributes, what's this? So to update an attribute, you can't just write it in the code for the update expression. You have to give it an alias lookup. So in this case, I want to update the stock. So I have stock equal to five here. 
And what I'm saying here is we'll call stock hashtag ST. So for the update expression, hashtag ST is equal to stock. So in the update expression, as you can see, I say set stock, set hashtag ST, set stock equal to this colon count. But what's colon count equal to? Colon count is equal to the expression attribute values, or in this case, colon count equals 10. So what I'm saying here is set stock equal to 10, which is set hashtag T, hashtag T is equal to stock, equal to colon count, colon count is equal to 10. So it is a wee bit of a new funky way of doing an update, but it works pretty much the same as a standard um, SQL Server update if you're, or, or Oracle update if, if you're familiar with it. So if I hit run, and you can see it was successful over the status code of 200. I go into the DynamoDB table and I hit refresh. You can see that that stock is now 10. Now it is a bit complex, but again, code's available on GitHub. Download, have a play around, change this around. You know, if you want to see it working and you want to understand it better, change that to hashtag T, hashtag T, change the count up maybe even to 15 and then run. And it should be successful with the 200 code. And this time if I go back in, you can see that it's now 15. So things like that, playing around with the code and just getting to grips with it. That's everything for today in this kind of interaction um, lesson. There's a bit of code there that I've provided for free. Download it, run it, play it with play to it with your heart's content. And in the next lesson, we're going to look at DynamoDB transactions, which is where we use these statements um, that we've just went over, but as a group together. So please join me in the next lesson where we'll look at DynamoDB transactions. But for now, I've made all this information for free as usual on my website, www.johnnyshivers.co.uk, link in the description. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.